Retriever live in the heart of game. <laughs> the Shadow Snows. Hi, I'm the Shadow Snows and I'm back with another Let's Compare video. Tonight I compare the game with Ball on the Commodore 64, the Amstrad CPC, the Atari ST and the Commodore Amiga. And I start with the Commodore 64. And this is a game you really need the old SID chip for. And this might be boring at the beginning, but the bouncing ball is really hard uh, to control and that's my usual uh, strategy. Just get the first power up and make the ball a little bit easier to control. Ah, come on. Hey. And the second power up. And I think it's pointless uh, to get any uh, other power ups first. And that's the next really important uh, power up, uh, the, the whiz kit. You start with the whiz ball and if you hold uh, down the fire button you can uh, control the whiz kit. In two player mode uh, player one uh, controls whiz ball and the uh, second player controls with kit makes the game a little bit easier and basically uh, first round is just uh, collecting some power ups ah. and yes they shoot and they kill you great and start all over from the beginning. Yikes. No! Okay. Next try. Ah, great. Dead again. Can you imagine this was one of my favorite games? I really played it a lot. And I totally suck at it. I suck so much I can't even show you what... Uh, what's the target of the game. You have to collect those, shoot and collect those colored bubbles. And I'm already better than I was before, but sadly this is my last life. Come on. And yes, with kid, or with cat is it, I think doesn't die instantly if you hit an opponent and I made it I collected all the red and this is a nice bonus round for power ups yikes So now uh, the wizard comes out of the, of the out of the capsule and mixes uh, the red color into his kettle and we have red in the world. So 
let's see. And this uh, really controls very well. The bouncing boost ball is a little bit annoying, but just collect the power ups and yout. I'm not in a very good position over here, but I made it. So as you can see, the next color, and I'm colorblind, so I can't tell you what name it is. Is it purple or something like that? Ah, oh, come on, where's the last? There probably is only one. Opponent left. Oh no, there are two opponents left. That's uh, on behind the score. And you can go into the different worlds. And you have different colors in the different worlds. So here we have green. And the game mixes the color. And can you imagine you have uh, to finish this? Oh, my, my whisk cat is sick. Ah, oh, and I'm dead. But basically that's the game. You have to collect all those colors. I think there are uh, nine different words. A lot of different words. Uh, and yeah, it plays really well. So let's see how uh, they did it on the Amstrad. Okay, back with the Amstrad version. It looks pretty much the same at the first look. Yeah, but only at the first look. Yeah, controls a little different. Uh, and of course, no scrolling. Come on, okay. So let's see how this game works without scrolling. Yeah. And a sound effect. Oh yeah. Really. Awesome physics. The sound effects reminds me a little of uh, the Atari uh, 2600. Yeah, awesome game. And somehow it controls different as long as the ball, uh, ball uh, bounces. I can't exactly tell yeah, how, but it's definitely not like the Commodore 64 version. The lack of scrolling takes takes away a lot from the game, I think. And the dark sound effects. Level design is also quite different from the Commodore 64. And for some reason I died again. Okay, I think this will be my last try. Controls are good. So at least they got one thing right. And I think the animation is also uh, not bad. It's actually quite, quite nice, but The game is pretty much crap, and I forgot to choose my whisk. Cat. Yeah, pretty much useless without a whisk cat. Yeah, and that's why the lack of scrolling is a problem.
Yeah, shoot the blue balls. Awesome. I'm such an idiot. And yeah, of course there are a lot of colored balls. Because I don't need them. I absolutely can't use them at the moment. Great. And if you're unlucky... You change uh, the screen and they shoot you and you don't have any time to react. Awesome. Come on, give me something to upgrade my, my ball. Ah. So if I'm not totally stupid, I get my whisk cat. And probably I die the next screen. Great. Ah, that's a good bonus weapon. So I just need something to shoot. Where are all those blue balls? I don't need more upgrades. I need blue balls. Ah, there are blue balls. And it looks like I collected some. Yes, I did. And for some reason it looks like the Amstrad version doesn't start with blue as the first color. So I have to already mix for the... Oh, this is so fucking boring. Great, back to the other side. And some upgrades, which I have no use for at the moment. And I got the laser. Not that I need it, but I got it. Ah, blue balls again. And I collected a white ball that's either something good or something bad. And yeah, back to the other side. And more upgrades, which I don't need. What's this? I don't know. Invincibility? Awesome. Your luck again. And I'm dead for some reason and I don't want to play anymore. So I won't show you uh, how the first color looks on the Amstrad. I continue with the Atari version. the Atari version and uh, this has uh, also has two player team option Ilyx. Okay the graphics is a little bit higher in resolution <coughs> animation is quite okay scrolling is quite nice for an Atari game 
you have this <coughs> parallax effect and you have some momentum in the ball. <coughs> It feels like an upgrade to the Commodore 64 version. Surprisingly enough. I don't like the sounds. Opponent's sprites look nice too. Oh, that was lucky. And that's the end of the world. Yeah, okay, the scrolling becomes more jerky. Oh, I lost my whisk cat. That's bad. We are gooey. Still have to get used to the momentum. And yeah, again, I don't need the red boards. Ah, and you should always to the right, unless you stick to the left. Or what? No. You should in both directions alternating. That's something you have to get used to. Ah, dead. But it's not bad. So let me see. If I make the first color. No! Crap. Awesome. How am I? Of course. So I have to take that first. Then I can take that and hope I have enough power ups left. Yes, I have. For my whisk cat. couple of more rappers, but this is significantly harder than the Cola 64 version. I made it. Much harder than the Commodore 64 version. Much, much harder. Ah, oh, great. Yikes. Yes, it's much, much harder than the Commodore 64 version. This rook looks uh, really, really nice. Ah, and you can select a, a permanent power. So next time I die, I have the rules cat. I lost my whisk cat again. Awesome. And those are a real pain in the ass without the whisk cat. I need some other color anyway, so... 
Let me show you the other world. One more plot. Of course. Of course. But there's another world. Ah. My home world. Still some enemies left? Of course it's... Yeah. And I think that was stupid. Yes, it was. But there's still some power-ups here to collect. And of course they are on the other, on the other side. So maybe I'll make the second color. And there are uh, three colors in every world. Nothing to do over here. And back over here. And I have enough red already. I need some green, I think. There's some green! And I made it. Another bonus stage. And I think... I go for the Amiga version after that. Oh, great. That was a quick bonus stage. Yes, you can select a permanent power-up. You just have to be quick. Quicker than on a Commodore 64. Yeah, nice wizard. Let's continue with the Amiga version. Okay, and finally, the Amiga version, if it works, yes, it does work, and it looks pretty much like the ST version. Yeah, put in some digitized sound effects. They obviously had a nice drum kit. Yeah, exactly what I wanted to do. And I'm already dead. Great. But I think I don't have to play this too much. It's basically the ST version. Ah, now the power up a little bit more conveniently placed. Yeah. And I still die. For some reason, the 16-bit versions are much, much harder than the Commodore 64 version. And I don't even recognize uh, the Amstrad version as, as Whizball. It's too bad. I remember the Amiga version being even worse. And this was uh, one of the games that made me keep my uh, Commodore 64. So I really didn't like uh, the Amiga version.
This was a real uh, big disappointment uh, for me on the Amiga. Ah, and if you collect the black ball, you turn off the light. And if you hit something, the light comes back for, for a very brief moment. And that makes the game even, even harder. Ah. Sometimes it comes back. I didn't want to go in there. I need my cat. It is funny enough because I don't like cats too much in the real life. But here in this game you really need the cat. Oh, great. Okay, I think I, I showed you enough. It's, it's the same as on the Atari ST with some different sound effects. Not necessarily better. I really prefer the Commodore 64 version. Amstrad version is really really crappy, no scrolling at all. It, it completely ruins the game. So uh, yeah, Commodore 64 version wins. This is a game you, you really uh, didn't want to buy a 16-bit uh, system for. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.